let's let's start. Okay, I've pressed record. <laughs> start. I think I think I can ask you a couple of questions, and we'll we'll kind of get somewhere decent. Are right. you going to start with me saying I'm a mess? <laughs> I'll, I'll just make a couple of cuts. Tim, good morning. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. <laughs> Tim, <laughs> good afternoon. <laughs> um, actually, I'm going to introduce you first. I say this is Tim, friend of mine, friend of the church actually. You and your wife came and you shared with us one of our marriage courses in Amina's, had a lovely curry together. And you were um, enthused about marriage and aspects of marriage. I wanted to catch up with you um, and have a chance just to share your experiences of the, the latest lockdown with our church. So can I start off with this question? When it was announced with what was it, 24 hours notice that we were going back into a stricter lockdown. What did you think? How did you feel? I, th I think hopefully maybe a, a lot like everyone else, like our hope was sort of stripped away, wasn't it? And it brought us to our knees again. And uh, it reminded us uh, that in a sense that we need to day by day uh, cry out to the Lord and basically look for hope in him because we've been looking i was thinking we're looking for hope from the government and again they keep ripping it away so it brought us to our knees again and uh, reminded us again that ultimately only hope can come from the lord yeah well that's, that's interesting you know looking towards uh, government and politicians for our hope and there's a sense in which they they do deliver on promises and you know things kind of getting back to normal but it, it showed us that it doesn't last doesn't it um so having kind of gotten over that initial like shock and it shouldn't be a shock that people let us down and only god is faithful but having gotten over that like, initial shock how have how have you guys found kind of having those freedoms taken away um, being surrounded by people who are afraid, like in a more acute sense, again, that kind of like ramped up over Christmas and January and all that. How, how has that been as an experience for you? I, I actually think there's no better time to be a Christian at this moment in time. I know that sounds like an evangelist speaking, but uh, the opportunities that this has brought, uh, just for us as a family, has been unbelievable. Um, First and foremost, opportunities, again, to, to delve into the heart of the living God. We've had more time to seek his face as a family and more family walks. But also opportunity with friends who are asking real questions. Uh, I believe that the Lord's shaken everyone. Uh, it says that, doesn't it, in, in Haggai, that, that he's going to shake the heavens and the earth. And he's basically shaken every human being in, on the earth to realise that we're going to die one day. And we found that there's been amazing opportunity, specifically in this second lockdown, to go with walks with people and chat with people when we've been allowed to, let's just say that, but also to pick up the phone and have opportunity to chat to people. And I think whatever's going on under the surface, we know that what the Bible says, that the wrath of God is being revealed against all ungodliness and people are suppressing the truth and at this moment in time, we know that people are beginning to think about their own mortality. And it's an amazing opportunity for us as Christians to be salt and light in such a dark time. And I, I think in the past, I don't want to get overexcited about church history, but in the past, in pandemic pandemics and situations, the church have ran into these situations and shown real hope. And that's why I'm so glad that uh, churches like Ammonford and churches around South Wales are just standing up and saying, Jesus, that in Jesus there's real hope. Hmm. Like, hang on to that word, hope. What are your hopes as a Christian over the next kind of week, month, six months? Well, I, am, I don't... If I'm honest, I try and put on a display most of the time, but I'm a complete mess, Sam, if I'm honest, most of the time. And I start every day crying out to the Lord, saying, Lord, I need you to get me through today. And my hope is the same hope every day, that Jesus 
is going to keep me and help me until the end, that I won't let him down and I'll give him glory. And it, that can be rhetoric. Don't get me wrong. That can be just sort of religious rhetoric. But even with lockdown, it's reminded us and it's sort of sharpened our senses, hasn't it? Because you've started to realise what's really important. Where is our real hope? And me being good at online chess or being a great rugby player or, you know, or my looks have gone now, but like, you know, the most good looking guy, they're all trash, aren't they, compared to having Jesus. And so every day, my hope is that I would give him glory, whatever he does. And yeah, I don't put my hope in government leaders. Don't put my hope in myself. No, every day I've got to cry out to the Lord Jesus. So not in a sense, nothing's changed, Sam. I'm, I'm a mess, but I'm Jesus's mess. And I want to be used in my brokenness to share his glory. I agree with all of those statements. Hey, easy now. Easy now. <laughs> Do you want to tell us what was happened in amongst the church over the last um, couple of weeks? Well, as again, I, I would say we've cried out to the Lord. We've absolutely said, Lord, we put our trust in princes, chariots. That's Old, old Testament language. And it's brought us nothing. And we've cried out to the Lord and we've seen absolute amazing answers to prayer. Absolutely ridiculous. Uh, so, for example, we've, we've had about 26 people over the last uh, three weeks come to Christianity Explored. And it's amazing. If I, I would love to describe every one of them. One's a surfer. One's a storage atheist. An another uh, person is like a, a student from... Vietnam, and you're like, where are these people coming from? But the Lord's just bringing people in. And one guy, one guy is a guy from the rugby club who messaged me uh, late at night um, over Christmas, and it was midnight, you know, when you're like half awake and you know the the screens in front of you, and he was like, I'm scared, and I'm like, yeah, you should be. I didn't put a like laughing emoji next to it, but like the fact is, it was explaining to him that there's hope, and that I genuinely, I, as I said before, I think it's such an amazing time to be a Christian because we ha we have this great news of Jesus Christ, uh, who who loves sinners, who's died for them, and wants everyone to know peace and hope through that valley of death. And we have that in our broken jars, don't we? We do. Yeah.